Go through this paper you all got. If you don't got it, it's still some on the chairs. Uh, it's an uh, easier version of uh, Iron Curry's 35 grid glazing test. And uh, why, I, why I made this 25 for some years ago is because I, I would love to do this 35 grid test from Iron Curry, but I never had the time or never had the patient to make it because I thought, I thought it was too much work, just too much work. So then I used some years just to figure out how to manage to make this calculation program for 25 grid. And, it's, uh, and after I'd done this, I realized it's actually everything else. You, you find it on the internet already. It's not, it's not in you I made, I just made a version which works well in our department. Uh, so that's it. And how we can use this in the beginning is with, because this is also meant to be, could be work when you don't know anything. Because you have to have the equipment, you have to need to have some materials but you don't need to understand anything about what ingredients do what and how to make a recipe or how to make a glaze like that. Of course, you have to know that you probably mix it powder with water that make it better to apply, but it's, otherwise you can just do it. So basically you start with finding a recipe somewhere in a book or on the internet. This is from the internet, it's from glazy.org. And it should be some kind of bronze, or not, yeah, bronze, but some weathered bronze. And I changed it a little bit because I just wanted to make it without lithium carbonate. So I actually just think I just took it out and just used the rest. Silica is a little bit more, but it's, it could be just the same. And to actually, of course, yeah, but here, here we haven't used this. We just find a recipe, you just mix a recipe, make some glaze test and see what's happening. And actually we was quite satisfied with this result. It's not the same as you see, but it's, it was nice. But uh, I just used that for, to try to make it in this 25 grid. And when we do that, you take out, you have the recipe down there, and how to use this kind of diagram is that you take out what everything what has clay, or what is clay, or quartz. So in some sense you need to know that, but the way I made it, you don't need to know that either, because when you choose your materials to put in um, into the recipe, you choose it in, in the key or you choose it from a list which I have listed all the fluxes we have at Kio. So if you don't find it here, it's not a flux, which at least is not a flux which we have in Kio. So you don't need to think about taking it out either, you just don't manage to find it. And it's not possible to put in something else because you have to choose it from a list. What you can put in as you want is uh, where you see it says copper carbonate and titanium dioxide that you can put in whatever you want actually. Uh, I go through this sheet a little bit later to see how we do this in practice and and in the yellow, um, yellow cells, you can, that's the way you can fill in things. And also in the blue, light blue cells, you can also fill in your personal information about what you're going to do. And you also put up the recipe, the ori original recipe, so you know what to do. So you find the recipe, take out clay and quartz, fill in from the flux list to make that recipe a starting point. Fill in some extra if you want that. And you have to decide the 
size of the batch because what we are doing is to, yeah, okay, a little bit more basic. Because when we are doing this kind of grid, you, you get 25 place recipes afterwards, but what you are doing is making four glazes. You scale them up, weigh, weigh, weigh them up, mix them with water, and then you mix this together before you apply them on the tiles. So it's not that much waiting, it's just a little bit, uh, you have to be concentrated when you're doing it. Um, So on, on the first uh, page, you just fill in everything, and then you get the four corner recipes, which you just mix. And when you do this mixing, you have to, the most important thing that all four of these recipes have the same, the equal amount, the volume. It doesn't matter how much water you put in, it's just that you have the same level. I can't explain you why that's correct, but uh, it seems to be correct. It's not the weight of the thing, but it is the volume, which is need to be correct. And of course, some of this glaze mixture will be quite thin and the ingredients just fall to the bottom all the time. So we have to steer all the time before you take some up and put it to the next. So we have made they made four we have made four glazes, equal volume, and we can use some serene or whatever actually to mix and make twenty five glaze tests. And this in the middle is uh, then the, the the mixing diagram where you you need 24 milliliters of that, and you need 16 of that, eight of that, and continue. So each glaze has it each its own color, so we can see easy what's what. And when you're done all this, and you apply it with a spoon on these test tiles, it's absolutely, a, I would advise to make more than one because What's it, what is the work is all you have done up to now. It is just put it on the tiles. It takes two minutes or five minutes. The other takes some hours. So then you can fire it at least to different temperature just to see what's happening. Then you can see maybe you just want to use cone six or cone five or 1000 degree or whatever you want to actually use. But if you fire a test tile, maybe 50 degree higher, or 50 degree lower than you want to see, then you maybe can get some idea, does this glaze has a just very narrow melting area or has it a wide area so it doesn't matter how accurate the firing. Or you can make 10 and fire it in all kinds of temperature and atmospheres and whatever you want. At least some more than one. And then after that, you get some results, and this is actually what come up from this test. And probably beginning is some, you see the green one, or some of the green ones there, it's more norm, look alike the same. You can also see this uh, afterwards, it's on the table behind you. So you can see it in real life. Here you see the temperature and reduction. And then, we actually have in this grid the 25 different recipes just ready for you to use whatever recipe you want. Still, without don't need to understand anything. You can just see the result and okay, yeah, I like that. You can go further with that. An empty one? Here you show. I just uh, see how we actually select it because uh, if I just mark there, suppose, then I can just find another thing in that flux list. Can take whatever I want, just something. 
And of course, it's, it's limited here that you can choose six different kind of fluxes, that's maximum. But normally, I think, is where you sell them, you will find more than that. You need that because you have taken out the clay, you have taken out the quartz, so what you have less. And the numbers you add in here could be whatever you want. It doesn't matter because it will be recalculated until 100 in the white column beside. Because all the calculation is based on this 100. And I think it, it should be, no, in, in the other column, other yellow is not that because that's the actual number which will come all the time. And then you had to choose how much do you, how big this four corner glazes has to be. And they, they need to be about 200, 250 gram with powder. Maybe 200, maybe 300, depends on the glaze, but around 250 degrees, 50 degrees, 50 gram. So then I have to change that to 250. And it's only in the yellow lines and the blue lines where you can write something. Everything, everything else is closed by a password, so you don't ruin the calculation by accident. It's easy if you want to just open up because it's a password standing in the sheet, so it's not a problem. It's just key. And then you can ruin everything if you want. So I will advise you to just do, if you want to use this, when you open up the spreadsheet, make a copy before you start doing anything because then you have, you can start there. So always save a copy in advance before you start doing anything. And then we get over, you have made all these four, you have the, the mixing there, that's okay. And yeah, actually when I have did this and showed it to the students, I actually found out that it was no point to show it on the screen because I didn't manage to get the whole paper at one time, so I just I ended up showing it this way. And of course, the, 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 whole, the whole idea about these 25 recipes we get is that uh, you have these melting ingredients, which most often give the characteristic for a glaze, which is all the sodium, calcium, or potassium. Calcium, strontium, boron, all, all these kind of these alkalines and earth alkalines, they are making up mostly what's most characteristic. And the ratio of these flux ingredients are the same in all of these 25. It doesn't change at all. What is changing is the amount of quartz, which will increase this way. So we get more and more silica, and you get more and more kaolin that way. Because when you add kaolin, you also get silica because it's alumina and silica in the clay. So I was actually really surprised when I just found out actually how much silica it will be in the upper corner. Let me come to that, I think. We just okay, get all this recipe, flux list. Yeah, what to say about the flux list is that you can uh, can we see? Okay. This is also protected by a password, yes. But you can easily take that off and you can add whatever material you want. And here is just a name, the name you have on your ingredients. If you want it in Czech or in Portuguese, so you can just change the name. You just have to open up the password. Is your flux ratio on there on the sheet? No. Uh, the flux ratio will, uh, that's what you put in, in the first recipe. It depends on your recipe. So the, the, the ratio, the flux ratio can be whatever you want. Okay, it says it's, that's the ratio there on the first. Now it doesn't stand there. The ratio doesn't stand there, but it's, it will be fixed when you make that first recipe. That will, but it, if it's, if it says in the molecular way, if it's 
0 0.2, 0 0.8, or whatever, it, it doesn't show up. You don't. Except that's what you keep the same. Yeah, you will keep it the same, but that's how the calculation is made. So we just keep that level the same. And you will increase quartz and kaolin. But it never, it, 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 it never sense, says anything actually about what kind of rate it is. It just says it is, it is the same. Or it doesn't say that either, you just have to know. But uh, all this kind of more information about the background behind this kind of diagram or kind of glaze testing. Uh, I hope it should be here also. Did no? No, I hope so. Yeah, it's up there. I think you could, if this works, because you can still maybe find it on Iron Curry's website. He has been dead for some decades, but his family is running this, or somebody is running it. So we can still go in there and read more of the background. Also buy his book if you want, possible, still possible. So here we can do some calculation. And yeah, that's another way to put it in. And it also, if I go a little bit before I start to talk on that one, does this work? Maybe that didn't work. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, for the recipe. This is glacier.org, which, as far as I know, is maybe the most actual or most upgoing calculation program for looking into glaciers like this. And when I showed this to the student, to have rather little, uh, they just find some recipe, they mix them, they haven't, prob most of them hadn't looked into this kind of program at all. And I realized when we start to look at this and try to, yeah, try to explain what that was, it was a little bit too confusing. It's probably too much information at one time. And you also get this kind of grid where you can see each of these dots you see there, it's one recipe. So this is just some examples of some recipes and you can go in and choose whatever you want and see what's happening. Hopefully it should be open up, but maybe not. No, maybe it just shows. And this color on the dots also says something about the ratio about the flusses, how, how much boron it is, and so you actually can get a lot of information. The first year I was into this kind of, uh, this, kind, this site, I, I, I didn't look at this at all because I didn't understand the shit of what that was about. It's just, okay, something. It just, whoop. I just look for a recipe, as most of us do, just find a recipe. And it did some thousand recipes in there, maybe for a moment about 15,000 different recipes. Of course, they are not that different altogether, but it's a lot to choose from, from all temperature, reduction, not reduction. And you can, it's three levels to go into this. Uh, one is just open, you can find recipes like this and get a recipe and just try that. And you can make, uh, you, you, you can log in, then you get a little bit, little bit more. But if you go more, I ended up as a some patron, you call it in the States, you pay some money. But as a teacher, or as a student, you can get the first year free. And it's not a big amount of money. You can come by with two dollar a year or something, or two dollar a month, I don't remember, but it is not, it's not a huge amount you need, because if you want to give them much, you can. But what I realized here, here but uh, if I could, no, not that one, but I realized that I could um, choose this four corner recipe, which I have 
used as an example. And I could actually do something with those. I want to calculate maybe. Yeah. And then I wanted to blend them by a B axel, I get four like that. And when I when I could go, yeah, I, I don't do it all, all about that, but then I could get the chemical analysis of all these 25 recipes just like that. And that was very nice because I had thought about how to man manage to develop this program like that, but I didn't need to develop it. But um, so that's good. Take that out, then it disappeared. So here is just a little bit of information about the background for this and some other websites for more information about calculation. So I think if I go down like that and then go over here again. Just take a brief uh, look into that. It's uh, because now you can see one of these grids, and you see 25, hopefully 25 dots on that. What's called a stall diagram. Then you can see how it moves around because on the x-axis is more and more alumina, and no, at the y axis up. And the x over there is more and more silica or quartz. So actually each, each, each line will have more or less the same alumina and it's a little bit higher. And the same with the, so that's a possible to look more into it if you manage to understand what this diagram is about. And that's, and here you can also, yeah. I, I, t I tried to yeah, skip that one. I also tried to visualize these recipes, so you can also see it on the table back there afterwards. So I make these uh, big squares, which uh, the white one, that's, uh, or that's most, that's quartz. And the longer one is the lumina. Green one is for, yeah, the green and the brown is for the, the fluxes. And just the two different kind of fluxes we are dealing, deal, deal, dealing with. So they are all the same all the time, but it's still increase in the alumina and in the quartz. And what I was surprised about was that it was so much more up in the place number five there. Yeah. I think we skip it. I also made this overview over the glaze oxides and the color oxides to see where they could fit in this uh, unity molecular formula or this chemical analysis Sager formula, if you go into that. Because some of them are quite obvious, and not, not, nothing is obvious, but um, some of them are more that we are very surprised where we, we put them. But I, I think we just have it as an overview uh, because I wanted to. Because what 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 I'm actually telling a little bit about now is the way I have run the, a more four days glaze course for the BI one students, and my goal for that is to give them some kind of vocabulary, some kind of basic understanding of the how this calculation program is working and how you can deal with this if you want to go further in it. You don't get enough insight to actually understand almost an, 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 anything, but to hopefully you get an ID. So if you start to read a little bit later on, maybe some years later, you will have some, okay, yeah, it was, it was something there. So. Maybe some of you will recognize this. I found it down in the ceramic uh, room here. So I just translated over to these small dots to see what's happening. Uh, I think we stop this 
one. And then we go over to the more analog part of it. Because when I'm doing these courses, I actually try to do it more or less without the PowerPoint at all. I just do it on the board. I mainly do it on a whiteboard, but it's very really nice to have a chance to use one of these. So I, I, I definitely I don't start with this, actually. Uh, I don't start in this way at all, I think, but I just show, do this bit this way now to, because I think in, in this way to try to get the student to understand a little bit of this, it's important to do it slow, just to do it and write when I'm speaking and we talk and they ask and they, Especially the first day, we have a great discussion all the time because they were just asking, 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 what, do, what are you talking about? So it was quite interesting. But I just did that as, think, as an example of, I think, what's quite fast come be a result in our head when we first start to make laces and you see all these names of the ingredients you have to deal with and you have no idea what it is. Is it salt? Is it yeast? Is it whatever? Of uh, course, uh, a problem anyway, if you use this program and have that, suddenly you get some ingredients which we don't have at all. Just some, probably some American ingredients because a lot of this glaze you find is from America. So of course, somebody has to help you to translate this into ingredients you probably have close by yourself. What I will try to explain a little bit, uh, what, what's the time? How many minutes we have back to 12 o'clock? Is it uh, 15 minutes or something? Or? 16. Yeah, 16, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, try, I will try to use this uh, last 15 minutes to explain a different by recipe weight, which we al always use over to the molecular number, which will be used in every kind of calculation. And some of you actually know what these molecules are about, but when you meet the students, you probably have no idea, because if I just say mul, mul, your thoughts just disappear. Because it it's, it's mean nothing for most of us. It just and if you have some idea that it has something to do with chemistry, it's absolutely no interest. Oof. Don't want to take in it. So what I start to try to explain that when we're using a recipe and we're using the weight, we weight some kind of material. But what's happening in the kiln, it doesn't matter about the weight of all these different things. They, the glaze and the reaction in the chemistry. They're just asking about how many atoms of each element do we have? What can I deal with? Do I have 50 quartz and 10 sodium or whatever? But they, they don't, the glaze doesn't ask about the weight of it, it asks about the amount. And just that to try to explain that a mole is a number. And it's all about number of atoms. And of course, atoms are so small, so it's just incredible to, you can't talk with them in one and one, because they, probably some billions between here, and I just do like that. But anyway, if uh, you do some, some uh, what needed here now is just eight or ten, ten different elements which we are using in the glaze mixture. Do you have any idea what you should put in here somewhere? Does, it, does any of this make any sense? Because here I've written, it's the same, um, same weight, and it actually doesn't matter if it's gram or kilo or a ton, because this is anyway just a number. And it's not a number, and it's just a relative number, because the amount is now not interesting. Because what's interesting later when the, in the calculation program is the connection between this, and then you can find out what you actually put in. But OK, yeah, the first one is lithium. 
and sodium in potassium. And we show you on the back side here after can you see what's going down there. And it's calcium, strontium, barium, and then you have zinc, and alumina, and quartz. But in, in, in this mole number, it's, they're all different, but the weight is the same. And the reason why this getting different is that each, each element and each element has an, a, an own weight. This, this little tiny atom has a specific weight. And all the different atom or different elements have a different weight. That's the main reason why they are not the same element because they have a different weight, so they look different, they behave different. And when we put that into the periodic table, or a short version of the periodic table, I also want to do this, I just actually write this up while we are speaking. And the first time we tried to find out, okay, how, how does it actually look? Because I didn't really remember how it is with two down, one down, or whatever. But this is a very common way to put up the element, the periodic table. And of course, it's a lot more between here. I just skip that because here all the colors comes. All the interesting stuff comes in between here. But... Uh, And for the understanding of what we are using, because we are not using lithium as an element, that's a metal. We always use this as an oxide or a carbonate. So I just write it like this. And you get the magnesium O, and you get the calcium O, and you get the strontium. And basically, we not use them as this either. We use them as a carbonate, but that most of it burns away. So it's the glaze that asking for the oxide. And you will have some zinc over here, which is for some reason interesting. You have some titanium dioxide, isn't it that way? And you have silicium, like that. Aluminum oxide, boron oxide. That's basically it. That's what we, that's the ingredients we are using in the glaze chemistry. Uh, so, of course, when, 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 if, if, if you want to understand more about the glaze ingredients and how we, how we use them, how they behave. Because when you, if you want to go in to use a glaze calculation program, it's no point to go in there if you don't have any understanding of what the ingredients are doing. And this calculation program, don't ask about if it's Cornwall stone or feldspar or whatever. They're asking about the, el the, el the elements or the oxides. So because we need to use a lot of time to explain or try to learn, okay, why do we use potash? Why do we use calcium? Why do we use aluminum? So I use some hours to go through that. I don't do that now because I try to just to concentrate on the mull. And to take this out, out, out to, because we, this, is an, yeah, this is a recipe from the ceramic uh, workshop here. 
And because this is a weight, you can have a gram there, and I have the same recipe over here with the unit two molecular Sager UMF. And this makes sense for most of us. You have gram, you can find an ingredients, whatever it is, you can just mix it, that's nice. But if, it's, if I say that this is the same, it more or less don't make any sense for most of us, or not for most students in the beginning. And one, one, one way I try to explain that this is about weight and this is about number and to understand what, that it's an, a number. I try to, for instance, say that you have, if you, you can take away the grams, that you can have 111 British, and you can have 40, I don't know if I know how to write Czech. Is it more like the, that there, or is it, is it the other way here? Something like that. Yeah. But okay, but as, as long as you say you have 111, oh, it's important to have this, because if I put kilo here now, yeah, we have 100, 111 kilo British, what's, what, what's that? Because it's maybe some, some person who weighed that or something. But if you say, if I go over here, and also when you're talking about mole, this, is, this, this will always be is which you call the flush together. The way it's put up is that it will always be one. But to, for us to understand things which zero point, zero point something, it often doesn't make any sense. So if you could try to just take away the comma, it's a little bit more easy to understand. It maybe has something to do with a number. So if you say, if, if you have 20 British, then nobody will say that some, anything kind of strange, it's just okay. Is it the same or the other way? No, the same error maybe. So it just, I just try to give the students different or a possibility to make different pictures in the head so they sooner or later can have an idea that it's about the number. And of course this is also not so very interesting to see this uh, periodic table at once, but all this will be the most active plus we have. Which is, which is called alkaline, alkali, alkali. And of course these other ones are plus yes, but basically above 1100 degrees. So in some sense, it may, may make some sense to see that they are putting it together in one column. As long as we can explain that uh, Ingredients, elements, we're standing in one column has something common, a lot of things common. And also what's interesting with, for instance, these uh, alkaline flushes, the higher up in the column you have, the brighter it is, or more mm. gloss, if I write it easier, more glossy, but if you're taking this column, it will be the opposite way. The longer down you get, the more glossy. If you don't work with barium matte glazes, because that will be something else. But you can have a lot of barium and you get a lot more glossy. So then it also, if you make a glaze with a lot of magnesium, you will never manage to make it as a transparent and a glossy glaze because it's so opaque in that sense. And why I, and this is called earth, earthen alkali. Okay, they are in the same column, but then suddenly we have this zinc oxide which is standing over here. But we 
always putting this in together with that alkaline earth in the way it works. And then you get the quartz and lumina and barium over there. Why I, why I actually put in the, put in the, set in the titanium dioxide there, because it's not a glaze oxide like that, but we use it very much in glazes. And what happens when we add 5%, 10% of titanium oxide, you will always get an opaque glaze. And the melting temperature will get higher, because it, it works in that sense in the same way as alumina to stiffen up the glaze. And, Heighten up the temperature. So if you go in the calculation program and see in the stall program, if you have put the dots in without the titanium oxide, or if you put it in with that, you probably all the dots will just jump up because it's more alumina. It looks like it's more alumina in, 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 in the glaze. So this is things I try to, to deal with, to make a lot of stories, to make go into details also to get them a little bit more understanding about the background, how you can go into the chemistry. If you want to go into the chemistry, because you don't need to, and if, maybe for many artists, don't do it. Because maybe your career will stop there, because you will just go into the chemistry instead, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know if I know any great artist with all, which also knows a lot about this. Because they just do. But they, to use that, that, that diagram and make some tests gives them a lot of help without understanding anything. Because they have a recipe, yeah, okay, fix that. Maybe go to another place of the world, some different ingredients, put the same recipe, make a grid, see what's happening. Yeah, choose that one, that's okay. To go into this is more for us people who want to explain what's going on. Instead of making great art, I can just try to explain this. Yeah? I think we stop there.